what's up guys so today I'm just gonna be talking more about um, like how uh, what are the parameters you might want to choose uh, in order to create like your own little home lab so given that there's so many options out there uh, as far as uh, servers and workstations and whatnot and there's like the, the prices are like completely like you, if you check out eBay you see servers for 80 bucks and 50 bucks and then there's ones that are up to like two thousand dollars so it can be often confusing uh, as to which one exactly is going to fit your fit your purpose, and uh, it can be very confusing as to which processor family and what what uh, what are the caveats and what are the the downsides of having uh, certain processors over the other, and uh, even like the memory speeds. There's there's tons of parameters uh, that I'll be addressing soon. So uh, this is this video is basically targeted to give you like a quick uh, quick info about what you can look out for and what you can choose in order to get your home lab running in a really reasonable amount of money spent. So stay tuned and uh, uh, let's move on with the video. So part for, for part A of this video, we're going to assume that you have like a $200 budget, maybe like 10, 20 bucks plus minus, and we're going to look at some servers that fit in that budget i'm i'm only going to be considering prices that are that i've seen so far in the past couple of months as of december 2015 and uh we're gonna we're gonna check out some servers and their configurations uh we're not gonna stick to any particular brand such as hp or dell or ibm i'm just gonna give you a brief over overview of what uh what processors you might find uh in that sort of a budget and which one might be better over the other so uh, let's uh, let, let's look into that more. Now, in this generation of processors, that is uh, from like 2008 to like 2010, uh, you're gonna often see all the Xeons having these prefixes uh, E, L, W, and X. So what these stand for is uh, E is gonna be your mainstream processors, which will be they'll usually be in this generation will be clocked at uh, somewhere between two to three gigahertz. So these will be your low clocked lower clock processors with like a mainstream TDP like 80 to 100 watts. Then there's the L version, which will be their power optimized processors, which will have lower clock speeds and they'll also be less power hungry. They'll be in the range of 60s, 60 to 80 watt. Then there's your X series, which is their extreme. It's kind of like the extreme edition. So they'll be higher clock than the mainstream parts. Uh, They'll uh, they'll have like higher TDP in the uh, plus hundred range, uh, and these these are mainly useful if you're doing uh, workstation type loads like video editing or you know like I wouldn't say gaming on these class of processors, but still like something that requires higher single thread performance. Uh, these would be a better choice. Then there's the W series, which is the the workstation series which will have the highest clock among uh it's uh, in its class uh, among other processors and these are again these are rated higher than the x series as the uh, as far as uh, clock speeds go and these will be more useful towards your workstation related tasks so starting off uh let's say your budget is uh, above uh, i mean below $200 so your 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 very first candidate for that kind of a budget is going to be Intel's Nehalem uh, I don't know how to pronounce that Nehalem architecture which is uh which was released uh back in uh, let me just check um was released back in 2008 so these are these are pretty old processors this is like one of you know the, the very first uh, core i series of processors um, as far as the servers servers go this is going to be your the the series of servers with the prefix uh, 55 so 5580 5570 5540 etc so um this this will be your number one candidate for this and i i'm, I'm considering uh processor generations uh from uh, Nehalem and onwards because that's where uh, the processors actually started, like especially the server processors actually started using DDR3 memory. So the reason why I chose this, uh, the series and above is because of DDR3, because that RAM is much more widely available and it's just uh, it's just easier to find parts for DDR3 because it's more of a recent format of RAM and it's also got its advantages over DDR2. So, um, Let's uh, let's start with the very basic uh, processor that you're going to come across all the time. Uh, it's going to be one of the 5520s. The 5520 
E5520 Xeon will be one of the most commonly found processors you'll come across on eBay. Uh, this this processor runs at 2.2 gigahertz. Uh, it's got a quad core uh, quad core CPU, uh, which will have like a TDP of uh, let me see TDP of 80 watts, and uh, it will support DDR3 RAM up to 1066 megahertz. So for virtualization purposes, uh, this should this this processor should work with the latest uh, versions of ESXi or uh, KVM or whichever hypervisors you're planning to use with this. You might want to check out uh, their their the the website for uh, ESXi just to make sure that this processor is supported. Uh, Another good candidate for uh, this kind of a budget build would be the workstation processors and the X series. Like the, that's the Extreme series uh, Xeons. Uh, all these uh, W and X series processors are going to be quad core and hyper threaded. You might you might get lucky and get one of the the hexa core ones, but that's that's very rare uh, as far as this budget goes. You might be able to get your hands on one of those uh, servers with these, but on, on an average, uh, from what I've looked, uh, you would definitely get like a quad core in this price range. Uh, even sometimes you might end up getting uh, a dual CPU configuration, which will be you know your best option. So in which case you will get four uh, four plus four cores and eight plus eight threads. That is, it will be an octa core, sixteen thread processors uh, paired together. Uh, so based on uh, this budget, uh, another candidate would be the X series and the W series. These processors will, are usually in the workstation uh, uh, computers that I think Dell and HP produce. These will come under the T3500, T7500 lineup uh, from back back in 2008, 2009. These are extremely capable, all of these processors. They'll, they'll support DDR3. Some will support up to 1333 megahertz of ddr3 uh, and uh, if it's a dual cpu they'll support upwards of 32 gigs uh, uh on the motherboard because you, you will get about i think uh, most of them will have like a 32 gig memory for each each processor adding up to 64 in case of rack servers uh 1u or 2u you can uh, get up to i think 192 gigs uh depending on the model so if you're if you're planning to use these systems for virtualization or you require a lot of memory definitely consider the 1u and 2u chassis over the workstation chassis uh however if you plan to use this in your office or work environment or your like i mean it's a home lab it's like a home office or home environment uh the the one u two u racks are going to be extremely noisy and power hungry so you have to keep that in mind so if you want a better compromise i would suggest getting one of the workstations uh like a t35 or t70 so moving on to the next uh the next generation of processors that is in 2010 the intel vesmere our microarchitecture this is again this will still be under your 200 dollars budget my suggestion is if you can always prefer the latest generation so if you can get a Westmere processor or a Nehalem at the same price I would definitely suggest getting a Westmere because it will have a much better instructions per cycle so that that will mean that let's say uh, in your workloads a Westmere processor might be able to do the same job that the Nehalem can do but in lesser clock cycles so that this would mean like a 2.6 gigahertz Nehalem uh, might be uh, outperformed by a 2.4 or 2.2 gigahertz Vesmere uh, processor. So keep this in mind. Uh, now looking at this series, uh, the most common processors I've seen are the quad core uh, E5620s. These things are extremely cheap. You can get this just the processor for $20 from Server Mon Monkey or any of these used uh, refurbished processor uh, server websites. So that that would be your prime candidate, and if you can get your hands on a server chassis that is that that is just like a bare bones uh, with support for two processors, uh, for about you can get these for about hundred hundred fifty dollars, uh, and then you spend forty dollars on two five fifty six twenty processors, you can have yourself a octa core uh, server octa core uh, server with sixteen threads for under two hundred dollars. Uh, of course, RAM and everything like you might want to put that uh, put that into the budget as well. But assuming uh, you have that, uh, you you can definitely build a server with two uh, 5620 processors in under two hundred dollars. Uh, you can also get them uh, 
pre-populated with uh, the embedded processors. Uh, I've seen lots of them out there on eBay. So that that would be your best best option, best budget option. Now, if you're looking for more performance, you might want to look at the X series. Uh, the X series uh, of processors are the mo again one of the most common ones that I've seen on eBay because a lot of data centers are I think retiring these uh, systems uh, from uh, their normal duty because of age, uh, perhaps performance issues or something. But in general, these are extremely rock solid, and these uh, processors are meant to be used uh, for a long time, uh, long periods of uh, uh, workload with uh, 24 hours operation. So you you should you should be assured to get like a really rock solid system if you choose any of these. So on, so the uh, talking uh, like speaking of the X series, uh, the most common ones that I've seen are the 5650 uh, and 5670. These are the hexacore processors. Uh, with hyperthreading, so depending on your workload, if you want higher clocks, I would I would suggest getting one of the 5680 or 5670, which are closer to the three gigahertz range. Uh, and anything uh, around about like three gigahertz would be a good fit for a workstation slash um, virtualization kind of a system. So uh, definitely look into the the Hexacore 56 series uh, processors. The, these can be found. Uh, at times for about like the the whole sys uh, the systems can be found for about 300 to 400 dollars um the processor alone would cost you at least 100 dollars if you buy from any of the the ref the refurbished uh, vendors this is slightly a, an expensive processor but if you do come across a deal definitely don't miss out on it uh these these processors are ex are extremely capable and uh should be able to handle any kind of virtualization loads uh as well as uh uh, any of the, uh, uh, if you plan on putting Windows Server or any of those uh, uh, operating systems, it should be able to handle that with uh, with ease. Uh, another another example for these systems would be the the the, the precision systems from Dell, which also come with uh, sometimes come with dual 5680 uh, hexacore processors. So that will give you like a 12 core, uh, 24 thread. Uh, dual CPU configuration. So uh, these these will usually run you from about five hundred to seven hundred dollars, uh, as I've seen commonly. So that's another good option to consider as far as this series of processors. Uh, and if you're looking for low voltage and uh, uh, low voltage processors, which will which will not be too power hungry and can run off of a four fifty watt power supply, uh, then definitely consider any of the the L series uh, fifty six thirty fifty six eighteen. But you will sacrifice more on the gigahertz uh, with with these processors. So if you plan on doing more single threaded work, uh, I would stay away from the L series and concentrate more on the E fifty six and the X fifty. All right, so. I, I understand there was a lot of discussion on lots of processors and it could have actually m confused you even more. So let me just narrow it down to just a few processors, like the top picks out of these two generations of uh, architect microarchitectures. So the, the, the number one pick from the Nehalem architecture, I would suggest, is the, the 5520, the E5520 for a budget build with uh, which does not uh, does not care about single threaded performance but more of a spread out multi threaded performance for a high performing single threaded uh, workload uh, I would suggest the x5570 from this series now moving on to the Westmere architectures uh, my top pick as far as uh, low single threaded performance but high multi threaded will be the 5620 again this is rated at um, let me check real quick the 5620 is weighted at 2.4 gigahertz. It's an 80 watt processor. Can handle the DDR3 1066 megahertz RAM, uh, and this is a really commonly found processor. And you can easily get your hands on this process for a processor for twenty dollars. The the second best pick would be the the either the 50 the X5670 or the X5650. These are again the most common ones I've seen. These are the hexacore processors with higher clock speeds. Uh, close to the three gigahertz range. This is again your best bet as far as the Westmere ar architecture goes. So that that's it for this video. Uh, I hope this was uh, helpful, and I hope this kind of helped you get uh, a reasonable understanding of which processors to look for uh, in this kind of a budget so server build. Uh, on my next video, I will be looking at the actual models of these servers, so like the HP ProLiant series and the 
Dell, uh, Dell Powered series and giving you the exact models which you need to consider uh, based on your budget. So hope uh, you guys enjoyed this and please uh, leave your feedback. Uh, it helps me improve my videos um, and helps me help you guys more. Um, so thank you.